Today we're going to discuss the differences between compass bearings and true bearings and look at how we find each. So let's begin. Now to get started, I want you to consider if we're walking out in the following direction of our compass, 30 degrees from that North Pole, and we need to describe that direction to someone else. Well, there's two ways that we can use to describe that direction that we're traveling. One's known as compass bearings, the other is true bearings. So let's start by looking at how we describe that direction with compass bearings. Now, when we record compass bearings, I like to think of it as answering three simple questions. The first question that we answer is, is that direction closer to the north or to the south? In this case, it's going to be closer to the north direction. So we put down a capital N to indicate that we're heading closer to the north direction. From there, the second question that we need to answer is, how far away is it from that north direction that we indicated. In this case, we can see that it's 30 degrees away from it. So we put that 30 degrees after the end. However, 30 degrees from the north direction can be either to the left as indicated here, or it could be out here on the right. So we need to tell the person whether it's 30 degrees in the west direction or 30 degrees in the east direction. In this case, it's in the west direction, so we put a capital W afterwards. So now we've successfully indicated that compass direction of which we're traveling. It's closer to north, it's 30 degrees from north towards the west. So let's erase that blue direction bar and have a look at what happens when we're calculating the true bearing. Now the biggest difference between compass bearing and true bearing is true bearing always starts at the north direction. It doesn't answer that question of are we staying from the north or the south? And the second biggest difference is it always measures its degrees in a clockwise fashion from its north star. So let's have a look at our diagram to explain what I mean by that. So what I mean is we always start at the north bar and we travel in a clockwise direction, as I'm indicating here, until we arrive to the bearing that I want to indicate. And what we want to indicate is how many degrees it is from that north bar in a clockwise direction. So in this case, we know that this whole circle should be 360 degrees, so the angle that I've indicated in red should be 360 degrees minus 30 degrees which equals 330 degrees. So our true bearing is 330 degrees from this north bar. However, we also need to indicate that it is a true bearing, and we indicate that with a capital T afterwards for true. So what we've found here is the compass bearing of north, 30 degrees west, is the same as the true bearing 330 degrees, true. So let's take a look at another example. Now let's revise our compass bearings. There's three questions that we need to answer. The first one is, is it closer to north or south? In this case, it's closer to south. So we put a capital S here. The second question is, how far away is it from south? In this case, we've got it recorded, which is 25 degrees. So we indicate that here after the capital S. And the third question is, in what direction from south did we travel? In this case, we've traveled east from south. So we put a capital E after that. Now for our true bearing, we need to work out how many degrees it is in a clockwise direction from north. Now we know between north and south it's 180 degrees, so to find this, it's 180 subtract out 25 degrees, which is equal to 155 degrees. So our true bearing is going to be 155 degrees true. Now there is one more rule for recording true bearings that I haven't covered, and that is if the true bearing is less than 100 degrees, we still record it with three digits as I've shown. The only thing is our first digit will become a zero. 
But let's now take a look at if we're given the compass bearing, how we convert it into a true bearing. We've been given the compass bearing south 35 degrees west. And I find the best thing to do in this situation is to draw yourself a compass like I've got here and put that bearing down. Now, what this means is it started at south, so it started down here. It's 35 degrees towards the west direction. So it's out this way somewhere and that angle here is 35 degrees. Now the true bearing always starts at north and we want to find how many degrees is it in a clockwise direction between north and the bearing we want to travel at. Now we know the degrees between north and south is 180. In this case we're adding on an extra 35 degrees. So therefore the true bearing here is going to be 215 degrees. So our true bearing is equal to 215 degrees true. But what if we're given a true bearing and we need to convert it to a compass bearing? Now you'll notice here that this true bearing is still given to three digits even though it's less than 100. We just put a zero at the front. But let's start the same way we started previously, drawing this bearing down on our compass. Now we know that true bearings always start at the north and travel in a clockwise direction. So we need to travel 75 degrees in this clockwise direction here. So we're going to be traveling out this way somewhere and the angle here is 75 degrees. Now to convert to a compass bearing we need to answer three questions. The first one is, is it closer north or south? In this case it's closer to north and we write that down. The second question is, how far away from north is it? In this case it's 75 degrees. So we write the 75 degrees and put that down. And finally the third question says, is it 75 degrees in the west direction from north or the east direction from north? In this case it is in the east direction. So we put a capital E afterwards to indicate that. So we've now found that 75 degrees true is equal to north 75 degrees east. So let's quickly revise with compass bearings versus true bearings. Now with compass bearings we need to answer three questions. The first question is, is it closer to north or south? And we record that down. The second question is, how many degrees is it from that north or south we just indicated? And we record that down. Then we answer the third question is, in what direction, either east or west, is it from the north or south that we indicated from question one? And we record that direction down. True bearings, on the other hand, always start at north as their starting point. And they want to know how many degrees it is from that north traveling in a clockwise direction. They always write this degrees to three digits, even if it's less than 100. The first digit when it's less than 100 becomes a zero. And then finally, they identify that it is a true bearing they're referring to by putting a capital T afterwards. So now I'd like for you to have a go. In front of me, I've got a couple of problems here that ask you to record the compass bearing and the true bearing for what was given in the diagram. Then for question two, there's four compass bearings given to you. And I'd like you to convert all these four to true bearings. 